o'clock on Wednesday, and it's time for... Craig, my name's Magic TV Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ireland. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and today, we are back with another four tricks. If you've not seen the review show before, the idea is me and Ryland perform every single trick we review, and we talk about exactly what we think, and we are always 100% honest unless it's Ryland going to bed and telling us that his lights have gone off and then he's far from honest because he stays awake all night reading magic books when he should be in bed. Anyway, you're not here to talk about that. You're here to talk about four brand new tricks in the magic community and the first trick we're going to be looking at is another one for the N2G series. So without further ado, let's get straight on to this week's tricks. Yeah. So first up, we have N8 by N2G. Now, N, uh, the N2G series... Uh, N2G have been bringing out coin sets since we started the review show. Some of them are awesome. You do the Hopping Horse one all the time. Yeah. I, I use the RBG coin set all of the time. However, some of them are very substandard. And one theme that runs throughout um, the N2 series is the abysmal tutorials. Uh, normally, the tricks that are created are quite well thought out and routined and structured but the instructions for it are just dreadful. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit concerned when I opened this up because it's a, I think it's like a, an eight or a 10 minute tutorial or something like that. So there's not that much information on it. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. In a second, I'm gonna perform a routine from this set. Now, unlike a lot of the other uh, N2G series of coin sets, there's no shells or double-sided coins or clever gaffing with this. What you have is you have a set of three coins that are kind of similar to Keymaster by myself or Holy yeah. Moly by Jay Sankey. Yeah. Um, but instead of using washers or keys, they're actually using Chinese coins. Um, so I think it's nice to actually show you what the coins are and then we'll do a performance for you. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons because there are some good points, but there are also some terrible points as well. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. yeah. So let's have a look. So the first coin, model that for everybody, is a regular Chinese coin. Now you can get these coin sets in different colours. This is the black one but you get them in lots of different colors. Um, so you've got a regular Chinese coin. Now the next one that you have is this one here, and this is, uh, there's no hole in this. It is completely holeless. And then the final one that you have is this one, and the hole is on the edge of the coin. So you have this one where the hole's on the edge of the coin, you have this one where there's no hole, and you have this one where the hole is in the middle. So using those three coins, you can, uh, do a variety of different switches and spellbound moves to make it look like the hole is moving all over the place. Yeah. Now, there's two routines on the tutorial. We'll get to the tutorial in a minute, but there's only two routines. Um, I'm gonna perform one of those routines for you now. So yeah. it's a simple card location. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you that right now. So let's have a look at the uh, one of the two routines. Let's have a look at this performance. Okay, right, I've got a pack of playing cards here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 52 cards. More importantly, 52 possibilities. Now I'm gonna take out a red queen and I'm gonna take out another red queen, okay? Yeah. And there's a reason I take out the two red queens and the reason is simple. Uh, this is red queen number one, this is red queen number two. If I take these two red queens, put them together and snap, I can make a Chinese coin appear from between them. Uh, have a look at that Chinese coin, make sure it's okay, make sure it's normal, make sure there's nothing weird about it. Is it all right? Yeah? Yep. <coughs> Good. We're going to put it over there for a minute. Now just say stop. Stop. Cool. We're going to take a card. doesn't really matter what the card is. I'm allowed to see it. We've got a jack. Are you cool yeah. with that? Jack yeah, is great. I'm fine. I'm fine. Take that uh, pen and just write your name there on the face of the jack. Just write your name. Have you forgotten how to write your name? No, I'm just... There we go. Perfect stuff. Are we good? Yeah. Who's going to blow? There we go. Ink's dry. Yeah. So we're going to pop that. Hopefully. Well, hopefully. We're going to put that right back over there. Okay? Yeah. Now I want you to watch. You've got to keep one eye on the uh, the jack. You've got to keep one eye on the coin. More importantly, you've got to keep one eye on me. Can you do that? You'll need an extra eye, but you can share. Now, do you see the hole in the Chinese coin? Yeah. Do you know why uh, do you know where, uh, Chinese coins have holes in them? Why? They're for peaking. Oh. Hmm. Terrible joke. But watch the uh, watch the hole. You see, if I do this, I can actually take the hole right okay. off. Yeah, yeah, you hold on to that. Okay. See, look at that. There's no hole there, is there? I mean, the hole is actually gone. That's because you're holding on to the hole. 
Now I'm going to try this. Can I hold on to the hole for a minute? Watch. Do you see your signed card right now? Mm -hmm. Look at the uh, the jack. More importantly, look at this part here. Because if I just snap, I can actually make that hole go right there onto the jack. You can have a look at that. Take it off me. Have a look at it. There you go. There's the card. There's the hole. It's gone from the coin onto the card. Yes. And the pen right. goes all the way through. Not and all you all can keep way. the card as a souvenir. So that is that is a really good trick. I mean, the idea of a hole coming off a coin and and going onto a card. I did something very similar on the Keymaster project uh, with cards and business cards. It would have been nice if they'd given credit to uh, you know the people that had that concept of the hole going onto the playing card. You know, crediting people like Michael uh, Michael Close and Paul Wilson and you know so on and so forth. But it's it's still it's still a nice trick. The other trick that they do with it. Um, is very very simply to show a hole uh, in a in a Chinese coin. You do a spellbound move in order to move the hole to the edge, which looks very nice actually. You show the hole and you can move it right there to the edge, and then you can show that it's actually there on the edge. You then pull it off the hole that you pull the hole off completely, and you put it onto a water bottle that's been sitting there the entire time. And as soon as you put it onto the water bottle, water starts coming out of where you put the hole, which was a thing that I first saw on a Sans Mines project, which is which is nice, but you have to have a, a prepped water bottle with you, but right time, right place, especially social media, that's actually a really good trick as well. So the coins are well made. Yeah. They match the other coins from all the other N8 series. So you can kind of bring these into, let's say you've done RBG, for example, you can finish off by taking the black coin and do doing something these, with the hole. Um, except the ones that are bad. You can do, you can do all these. And yeah, you can. So you can combine them all together. You could combine them all together. And you that's, can do like an axe. Yeah, you can do it with Chinese axe coins. with Chinese coins, which is really nice. And yeah. this, there's no difference there. Exactly the same thing. So from that point of view, it's really good. And there's another point that I want to make as well, which is quite nice, in that you could actually, if you wanted to, combine this with Keymaster, um, which is what I'm quite excited about with it, because I actually do use these Chinese coins for a particular thing. I love the idea of finishing off a coin routine, just having one coin, taking off a key from my keychain, having them hold onto it, um, and then taking this coin, moving the hole off, giving it to them, throwing it at the key, and when they open up their hand, they've got two holes. Yeah. And then I'm into Keymaster, and I can do some of the routines from Keymaster. So I'm quite excited about sharing, uh, about, about coming up with routines with this. However, let's talk about the glaring negatives. The one glaring negative is, is the tutorial, and there's a few problems with the tutorial. The first problem is it is just massively too short. It is nine minutes. There is so much more that you could do with these coins. There's only two routines. The second problem with it is the teaching is just as bad with this set as it is on every other coin set. If you've not seen a, an N2G coin set before, the tutorial is normally shot what looks in, it's shot in what looks like a, a hotel room. The people on there can't speak English. There's irritating move, music running over the top and they just have a real close up camera. Um, just, they do the moves from behind in slow motion, but they're not, there's no subtitles on the screen. They're not talking about it. So it's just irritating music and slow motion of the moves which makes it very difficult to learn the tricks because they're not actually being taught. It's literally just like an exposed camera view with irritating music, no subtitles and no talking. Um, and I understand that this is produced by people that aren't from an English speaking country, and that's fine. But if you're gonna sell it to an English speaking country, then at least either have subtitles or have somebody do a voiceover or something because it really makes it difficult to understand what's uh, what's going on now yeah that's not the biggest problem though for me the biggest problem for me is normally n2g are very good at routining the tricks normally the tricks that they present are really well routined and it's just that you can't really follow it in this case it feels like they've half asked the whole project it feels like they've looked at I don't know, Holy Moly or, or, or Keymaster and have gone, oh, you know what, we could do that with holes in our, in our Chinese coins. Not really put much together. And I'll give you an example. So the routine that I talked about with the water bottle. And just to give you an example, 
of of because if you were new to magic and you bought this, you're just going to learn the wrong way of doing things. So the trick with the water bottle, the idea is that you pull the hole off the kit, off the um, you pull the hole halfway off, and then you pull it the rest of the way off, and it goes onto the water bottle, right? So what they tell you to do is take this hole, um, uh, this this coin which has no hole, put it into your pocket, uh, into your right hand pocket, right hand pocket, yeah, and have this hole with the have this coin with the hole at the edge, have that in finger palm, right? And then you bring this out and you have the water bottle here. So the idea is that you do a spellbound like this and you move it halfway onto the onto the edge of the coin. Now that's absolutely fine. What they then tell you to do is ditch this into your left hand pocket and they give you no justification for doing this. It's not like you're going into your pocket to get something else. You're just blatantly putting your hand in your pocket. Then you're transferring the coin to this hand and you're blatantly putting your right hand into your pocket to take out this coin so that you can then do another spellbound to take the hole off and put it onto the water bottle. That is just completely the wrong way of doing things. That is, that is just half arsing things. Anybody who watches this that's new to coin magic, that thinks that this is the right way to do things, is gonna massively um, learn the wrong way, to be perfectly honest. There's no justification, there's no misdirection. Yeah. And now maybe they're trying to put something across that I can't follow, but I wouldn't know because there's no subtitles, there's no talking, and it's literally just a camera. So all I have to do yeah. is go on what the camera's showing them. So the teaching is terrible. The tricks that come with this are terrible. The card trick's the only one that's okay. It's a good trick, don't get me wrong. But like, I don't want to compare this to my own project. Um, but I mean, when you're talking about moving holes around on objects where holes normally are organically, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to compare it to Keymaster. And Keymaster is a two hour project with like 10 or 11 routines. The, the, the card routine, which is pretty much identical to what they're doing here, is one routine of a whole bunch more and isn't even the main routine or even the secondary or the third routine. There's so much more that you could have done with this if you'd given it half a thought. As it happens, what they've done is they've taken a coin set, they've taken these three coins out and they've just put it, no talk about how you can actually incorporate this with other coin sets, no talk about how you can actually transition from one coin routine with N6, for example, onto this or anything like that, nothing. I've talked a lot and I'm very sorry because I was quite passionate about this. When I saw it was a moving whole thing, I was quite excited about it and it's disappointed me very greatly. What do you think? I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'll do it or not. Well, here's the thing. I am going to do it. But that's not because the tutorial's good. That's not because the teaching's good. That's not because the tricks are good. I'm going to do it because I think there's a lot that I can do with this and Keymaster. And if somebody, uh, you know, wants me to do a video or something showcasing the routines that I come up with that combine this with Keymaster, I will. Because Keymaster's great because it's got a two-hole key, it's got a hole down the stem, it's got a no-hole key, it's got a normal key. So you combine it with these three coins, I reckon you can make some really cool stuff happen. I love the idea of just, just you know, for anybody who's got Keymaster, for example, I love the idea of doing Gatekeeper with this. So uh, check this out, right? Have a look. I've already started playing with this. So you show a, a Chinese coin and you do the gatekeeper routine off Keymaster, but with coins. So you show the coin and you show how you can move the hole right there to the stem uh, or the edge of the coin. And you say, look, I'm gonna, I've got it right there on the edge of the coin. I'm now going to take it off. So now I take it all the way off and watch the hole, watch the coin as I throw it back on in midair. And just, just, you know, doing something like that. But... I think they've, uh, they've they've not really thought it through, to be perfectly honest. I think that's the uh, that's the problem. But anyway, yeah. I'm going to give this eighty percent because I am going to do it. But if you're new to coin magic, if you haven't got, um, you know, I mean, a lot of the moves that I talk about in Keymaster could be applied to this as well. A lot of the concepts could be applied to this. So if you yeah. have got Keymaster, this is might be a nice addition. I'd recommend getting it. But if you're new to magic, if you haven't got Keymaster, and if you're looking for something where you can pick it up and do a kick-ass trick, this may be not the one for you. So 80% from me, what about you? Yeah, um, I'm gonna give it 79. 79%, you're not gonna do it? Yeah. Okay, 79% from Ryland. Generous marks, to be honest. Uh, it really should get lower, I think, but uh, 
you know, I am going to do it. So I'm going to give it 80%. So 80% from me, 79% from Ryland. Let's move on to something that is a little bit more exciting. Okay, so next up we have Nostalgia by one of my favourite magicians, Michel Poit. I always get his name incorrect. Uh, but uh, a fundamentalism routine from the creator of best-selling effects, Priceless and Socks. And uh, yeah, Priceless is amazing. Socks is amazing. I love both of them. Um, so I know that when... Oh, is Socks the one with the yeah, 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 socks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah we've got is. a Halloween version. Yeah, we've got a Halloween version. We've got a normal version. We've got a Christmas version. Love Socks. Nostalgia is very... Uh, is You know, I knew I would be excited about this when I saw Michelle's name on it because... Uh, I know that anything he puts out is absolutely golden. So what we have here is we have an old fashioned viewfinder. If you remember those from when you were a kid, it's an old fashioned viewfinder. I am a kid. Yeah, I know, but when I was a kid, it's an old fashioned viewfinder. And what it allows you to do is do a really awesome mentalism routine, like a really yeah. awesome mentalism routine. Mm, yes. Um, so before we do anything, I'm going to get Ryland to perform it so you can see exactly what it's like. Ryland has gone gaga for this. This is one of his favourite items in a long while. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to get Ryland to perform it and then after he's performed it, we'll talk about the uh, what we think. Okay, so here I have like a viewfinder and I have a bag with some of the discs that you put in the viewfinder. I used to have one of these as a kid. This was amazing. When I was a kid, there was no internet. There was no YouTube. There was no nothing like that. You can go on the internet. This was what everyone had. We used to trade discs with each other. If you have one of these, you're a cool kid. Mm. You can like flick through and you can see different images. There's no images in there now. No, it's there's just not. blank. They're all on the discs, aren't they? Inside. They're all on the discs. No disc inside now. No. But we do have the discs inside the bag. Okay. Which are here. Now, all the discs are different. There's um, 14 images on each disc. 10 discs, that's 140 images. Okay, that's a lot of images. Yes, quite a lot of images. And you can look at these. Okay. Make sure they're all different. Because you can actually hold them up and look at the images, yeah. can't you? Like, that's playing cards, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, that would be landscapes, uh, landscapes and stuff like that. Looks like buildings, space. That looks like Charlie Chaplin. Mm hmm. Uh, the earth. That looks exciting. Um, the desert. Okay, yeah, I can see loads of them, yeah. Ooh, the sky. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. I'm so, happy. You see, see all of them, yeah? Yeah, there's loads. Yeah. All different. Yeah, loads. Okay, I'm happy. Okay, so all of these are different, yeah? Mm hmm All of them. Yes, all of them are different. All of yeah. them. Okay, so we're going to put these inside the bag. Okay. I'm going to shake them up, and you're going to pick any one. All right, okay. I can do that. Just like this. Okay, so you can see that they're all in the bag. Yeah. All in the bag. So I'm going to zip it up. Okay. Shake them all up. Mm -hmm. Not really mixing, but... Kind of. Okay, so... What I want you to do is I want you to reach your hand inside the bag and I want you to pick any one of the discs. Go for one in the middle. There we go, got one. Okay. Got one, don't show me. Alright. So I'm going to zip it up. Put it... There. All right. Okay. Okay. So I want you to put. You, you see your disc. Yes. There's somewhere um, on the edge. It says uh, start. Yes. Got it. Okay. You see where it says start. Mhm. Mm uh. So make sure it's not the wrong way around, so you can actually read it like a normal line, not yeah, backwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you flip it around, so you got it the correct way. Oh. So put it in the thing. Put it in the viewfinder so you can see it. Yep. Uh. Put the viewfinder under the table. Okay. And flick the uh, things a few times. The thing a few times. The lever thing. Yeah, the lever thing. How many times? As much as you want. You can stop whenever you want. Any time. Yeah. Done. Done. Bring it out. One more. Okay. Done. Bring it out. All right. And uh, look inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mhm. Mm now, uh, put the viewfinder down. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to try to read your mind. I don't believe you. Is, is, it's like a real picture, isn't it? It's not like a cartoon, is it? No, it's a real picture. Real picture. It's grey with a bit of colour? Correct. Or is it all grey? No, it's a bit of colour. A bit of colour. 
It's a bit of colour, a bit of red. Yes, it is. Uh, is that red? A bus. <laughs> yes, it is a bus. It's a, it's a big type of bus, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I'm also seeing a clock in the picture. Yes. I'm also seeing a clock. Big clock. Yes. On a tower. Yes. Is that clock Big Ben and the big bus? A double-decker bus? Is it? Is is that? It's, it's not a thing, it's a place, isn't it? Yes. It's a capital city, isn't it? Yes. Is it London? Yes, it is. Dude, epic. Boom. It is indeed London. That was amazing. So, Ryland, nostalgia. I mean, that was a really good performance. Thank you. Really, really good performance. I'm going to ask you some questions about it. So, first of all, it was only a 20-minute tutorial. Yeah. Um, is it easy? Um, sort of. Yeah, it's not that difficult, not is that it? Difficult. The you saw the the way that Ryland did did it, which is the way he's gonna do it. You saw he used the uh, clear force bag. Uh, the clear force bag that comes with this is a thing of beauty. It really is. And um, Michelle's quite thorough on the project, and he goes through so many different ways of doing it. If you don't want to use, well, first of all, he should have explained how to get into the box. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. No, I haven't got it. You do it. So um, but there's, there's lots of different ways of, of using it. Thank you. I'm an idiot, obviously. There's lots of different ways of doing it. So you get a clear force bag, um, which is great. Uh, and that makes the whole process very, very easy. But he talks about how you can actually do it without the clear force bag. And you just take the discs out, you have them examined, and then you come back and you go into actually the routine. There's a lot of different elements going on here. It's not just one principle, there's several different principles that make this work. What's nice is the viewfinder is completely ungimmicked. Yeah, um, it's which is, normal. And they can look and through... And you still got the thing. And you can look through the... Oh, have I? Sorry. You can look through the discs as well, can't you? I mean, yeah. they got, like you saw in the performance... Yeah, I was looking through the discs. There's actually one disc that is actually a trick. Well, yeah, I mean, he's included, as a bonus routine, the princess card trick on one of these discs. So on one of these discs, you put it in... And you can get the spectator to uh, to look through it. And it's the princess card trick. So it goes, think of a card. I'm going to make that card vanish. It's... Okay, think of a card. Look at it. Got it? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to re turn it around. I'm going to remove one card. Gone. <laughs> Ta-da! And that freaked your sister out, didn't it? Yeah. Like she had no idea. It freaked me out. It and did. I'm like, and I'm like, how does that work? He'd never seen the princess card trick before. But then I, then I realised. Yes, you figured it out. After I kept on looking at it, I'm like... Uh, if I look at that one and that one, oh, I see. <laughs> but it's really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, here's the one thing that I was disappointed with. And you get a bonus disc. Which you do is... get a bonus disc, yes. Um, I'm disappointed with one thing. And the thing I'm disappointed with is that there was no live performance. Uh, Michelle talks about how this is something he performs on stage all of the time. And this is like a, a, a big part of his act. And I believe it. I know he's one of the best performers uh, in the world. So it would have been nice to have seen a stage performance of this, even if it was just grainy footage from a comedy club or something or from a corporate event and it's grainy footage. I would love to have seen uh, Michelle perform this. I think yeah, so when you get an extra gimmick. You get an extra gimmick. No, well, not a gimmick. Yeah, it's not a gimmick, but you get an you extra, get an extra disc, disc, which has got, got like, a load of Murphy's Magic it's, it's items got a load on of it. Magic. It's got Cube. Cube 3, yeah. yeah cube 3, it's got Sinlin, it's got the Toes of Casino card. It's got Lux. It's got a dice trick, a okay. mental dice. Nobody cares. Come on. It's got all. Awesome. It's got Lux as well. Yeah, Lux. Um, so yeah, there's no live performance. There should have been a live performance, I think. I think that's especially when you're paying the amount that you are for this. This is like two hundred bucks, two hundred dollars. This is not cheap, and I understand why. There's a lot of elements that you get with this. Yeah. Um, lots of different ways that you can do it. Uh, it's just a real working and routine also, this now. Is a Mm, yeah. Now, the, the one other thing I'd say is when uh, uh, Michelle does it, he brings out a pad and when they're thinking of the thing, he starts drawing what they're imagining and he turns it around and it's correct. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> haven't, uh, you haven't got that down yet. So Ryland's doing like more of a direct mind reading thing. So my question for you, right, I know that you love this and you're currently putting a new stage act together aren't you like yes. you're, you're currently like spending all day every day yeah, I've got a, scripting I've got milk and, and light bulb 
I've got the stools, I've got egg bag, yeah. I've got venom cube, I've got behind the back soles, some spectator behind the back sole. Yeah, I've also you got, got all... loads of other things. You I've got, got, I've got five rock ticks, I've got uh, a ring uh, and the rope. He's, he's putting a 40 minute stage show together and uh, lots of stuff, lots of uh, lots of scripting. I think I might lots add of... this. That, that's what I was going to ask you. Would you add this? Yes. You would add. You would add this. This is a really because one thing that I've noticed about your act, it's all about stuff with, that kids would do. There's stuff with Lego, uh, John Morton. Yeah. You forgot about. Oh yeah, the banner. I've got the banner trick. The big one. The big yeah. So um, <laughs> the main one. <laughs> you, you know you're doing stuff with with Lego. You're doing stuff with Rubik's cubes. I'm doing stuff with milk. You know, milk. kids drink milk. This is like a kid's toy. I'm doing stuff with eggs. I know. Kids play with this eggs and break it all the time. This. Oh, which I've done twice, by the way. Yeah, I know. Hey, you better not blow, break any more blown eggs. I haven't got many yeah, left. I've, I've only broke two. Okay. I've, I've still got four left. Okay, good. So. I actually got a thousand plus. <laughs> you, so. You got stock will you shut up? <laughs> I've got stock ones. Uh -huh. So, um, this, this reminds me of a kid's toy. Well, it is yeah, a kid's toy. It is a so, kid's it would fit toy. into your act. And it is mine. Oh, no, I, no that's perfect for you. Perfect yeah. for you. So, I I'm, I'm going to give it, it, it. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, okay. I. I don't think it would fit in my act. I think it would fit in your act. I just know what I can pull off on stage and what I can't. Maybe if I'd seen a live performance of it, it would change my mind. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with it because I know that you'll smash it. Uh, and I know Michelle will work it to death and I'm sure he has a fantastic presentation for it. Um, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I know I'm not going to do it, but I think it's amazing. I'm going to give it 79% just because I'm not going to do it. And if you have, if you're new to the review show, if we know we're definitely not going to do something, it'll get 79% because 80 and above Even means it's it going is, into the act. 80 and above means you're going to do it. Yeah. 79 and below, you're not going to do so it. So 79%, but I think it's awesome. 79% means it's awesome, but you're not going to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and if you've got or a, you like it. and if you've got a stage show, um, or even a kids show, I reckon this would work in a kids show as well for older kids. Then I'd recommend it. What are you giving it? Hundred. 100% I thought so yeah so 100% from mine maybe if, if you do a stage show with this I think I might give this trick of the week you're giving this trick of the week if, if oh I don't know if you do a stage show I think this is better if yeah you do, that's better yeah. if you do a stage that. show can I get some video of this to put on review show revisited yeah. of you performing this yeah, yeah cool okay so 100% from Ryan and 79% from me now we're going to move on to the next review so next up we have Blankety and this is from Big Blind Media and presented um, the back. No, presented <laughs> by Liam Montier. Um, a turbocharged assembly comes with 16 bicycle cards. Um, so I'm not going to say anything about this. I'm just going to perform it for you. Uh, it's a progressive assembly. That's all I'm going to say. Have a look at this performance and then we'll talk about what we think. Wait, you just said something. I only, I only said it's a progressive assembly. That's and you said, uh, see what you think. Yeah, shut up. And now you say shut up, that's another thing. I'm rolling it now. And now you say you're rolling it. So, Ryland. Yeah? I collect jokers. Yeah. I'm going to show you something crazy with four jokers, okay? Uh, this one here is joker number one, this one here is joker number two, this one here is joker number three, and this one here is... Joker number four. Bob. Oh. <laughs> anyway, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the four jokers, yeah? yeah. I'm going to show you something uh, amazing with them. I'm going to put one joker there, one joker there, one joker there, one joker there. Okay. So the four jokers kind of go in a line on the table. Got it. Now, oh, I also have some other cards here as well. Now, they look the same from this side, don't they? They, they look the same from this side, but they're actually yeah. not. They're actually different. These cards are blank. These are what the cards look like before uh, they're printed. Uh, very difficult yeah. to get a deck of cards like this. You've got to know somebody who works with the playing card factory, and they sneak them out on the graveyard shift. Um, but there's 12 cards altogether. And the reason for there being 12 cards is I'm going to put three cards on each joker. So three cards go on that joker. Three cards go on that joker. Three cards go on that joker. And then finally, three cards go on that joker. Okay, so um, three, 12 yeah. cards. 12, 12 cards, cards, yeah. Together. So this one here is going to be the leader joker. So I'm going to just step that forward there like that, right? And the idea is, I'm going to try and make these jokers jump to join the leader joker. But they're going to go one at a time. So we're going to start off with this joker here, right? Yeah. Now, obviously, there's four cards in total. But I don't want you to worry about the blank cards. Just worry about the joker, okay? Because if I take that joker and just wave it over this packet, what happens is that joker completely 
and totally disappears, leaving us with just three blank cards, four blank cards, no joker. It's kind of crazy, right? Let's do that again, because to see the joker doesn't jump over here, it has to go in steps. So now over here, we don't have one joker, we have one joker, two blank cards, and another joker. You see, the jokers are actually jumping here one at a time, and the blank cards are jumping back. It's kind of really weird. Let me do that again. So we've got two jokers well, in this pack. Into each other. Well, we're going to hopefully they don't, you see. Okay. Now, this is harder because I've got to make two jokers go at the same time. Looks like that. Just a little bit of a snap. And both jokers have gone. Just leaving four blank cards. What? Now, that leaves us here. Instead of having three blank cards and a joker, we have one blank card and we have one, two three jokers it's a lot harder but we're going to try and do this watch i'm just going to take that blank card i'm going to take those three jokers and if i just snap with any luck all four all three jokers disappear just leaving us with blank cards and the reason is they've all got to go somewhere where do you think they go mm. yeah but this is a magic trick ryland mm. and when you're watching a magic trick you've got to expect the unexpected which is why these are the one two three four queens and i've got no idea where they came from so um i love that i love i love i love this routine yeah. it's such a clean way of doing the progressive assembly um just a really clean way of doing it i've studied this plot actually for a long time and there's lots of different ways of doing it liam has done what liam does best which is he has streamlined this down uh, to its nth degree and, uh, and and put together a really great well-structured routine now I remember and uh, yeah, I, I think it was Eldo Colombini I remember I think Eldo Colombini doing a routine like this with flies and I think the handling was similar although different uh, Liam's really cleaned up lots of different points like in the third packet when he does the John Barron bullet count that is just such a beautiful way of of making that particular moment happen and one thing that I like the attention to detail in this trick is wonderful I've seen a lot of versions of this trick in the past and when you've got the packets each packet is handled differently so for example uh, you know, on the first packet, they might do a fingertip type thing. And then on the second packet, they might do more of a, um, you know, like a, a diminishing lift type sequence. And because of that, it kind of comes across as very disjointed. The way that Liam handles each individual packet looks and feels exactly the same. Um, and because of the structure of the routine and because of the way that it's actually laid out in its routine, they just never see that kicker coming at the end with the four queens. Um, it's 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 just really good. Now, from a res uh, from reset point of view, as soon as you put the cards back in the wallet, it's reset. It comes with the wallet. You have got the blank cards on one side. You have got the jokers on the other side. Um, and you're ready to go. Two things to consider: uh, the the packet of blank cards. You're left with a packet of blank cards on the table. They can't be examined, but the queens can. Now, the way that Liam talks about this is he talks about at the end, after you've made the three jokers disappear, you take these blank cards and put them away and put them away in your pocket. So all that's left on the table are the four queens. So when you turn them over into the four queens, everything's examinable, which is a really good idea. So although it's technically not examinable, in reality, it kind of is examinable. I think this is up there with McDonald's Aces. The only other thing to take into consideration is that you need a table to do this on. Uh, you can't do it on a um, uh, in a walk around situation. You need a table. Uh, it's not that difficult to do. You need to know some basic sleight of hand, uh, mainly the Elmsley count. Um, although the bullet party count is in there as well. Why although did we that's... Learn that recently? yeah, you forgot the Elmsley count, didn't you, dude? Couldn't believe it. Um, he's like, I was doing a trick, and he's like, I don't think I can remember the Elmsley count. Um, luckily, you got it back down again in seconds. Um, but yeah. You're like, oh, you need to. Well, you don't do many tricks with an Elmsley count, do you? No, we, need to, no. we need to teach you some. Um, but yeah, uh, there you go. That's, I mean, there's nothing else to say about this. You just saw the performance. It's examinable to a point. It's easy to do. If you can do an Elmsley count, that's pretty much everything that you need. Um, it's reset instantly. Uh, it's very, very magical. You can adapt the presentation to 
any type of situation. So whatever you want to adapt the presentation to, you can. And um, uh, yeah, I, I, there's nothing else to say. It's really good. I plan on doing it, definitely. I'm going to take it on a review show revisited soon. Uh, I really like this. I'm going to give this... 92%. I'm going to give it 79. You're not going to do it? No. You're not that into packet tricks, are you? No. You, you, you do card magic, but cards aren't your main thing, really, are they? It's kind of no. more coins and, and coins. cubes and eggs and stuff. Eggs. <laughs> um, okay, 79% from Ryland. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. And rope. You do so much rope tricks. It's ridiculous. 79% um, from Ryland. 92% from me. It's really good. Let's move on to the uh, final routine. Yeah. So the final trick today is Candy Morph, and this is by Ryan Lee, uh, Lehman and Victor Sands. I like Victor Sands. He's got some really cool stuff. There's a, don't say what, but we've got a really cool thing by Victor Sands mm, coming up on our own. No, you haven't. Oh, I yeah. have. Torch. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> really good, that is. Um, so, uh, really big fan of Victor oh, Sands. Oh, I know. I know it's from... The next review. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is why we're not talking about it. It's next week. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know it's I haven't even next filmed week it yet. Uh, <laughs> but this is by Vanishing Ink. Uh, you did this on your Instagram. You did a couple of different versions of this on your Instagram, and it yeah. blew up. Everyone was like, oh my God, that's amazing, Ryland. That's so good. Um, so we're going to get Ryland to perform this so you can see exactly how it looks. And then after he's performed it, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, so earlier this week, I found this Kit Kat in the drawer okay okay and i thought of giving it to thea all right yeah um but then i realized she's got very bad breath and eating chocolate is not that good <laughs> so mean to your sister right go on so do you know what i did what what i did is i took the kit kat yeah mm -hmm. like this i took the kit kat and went then shook it into some mint savers Lightsavers. <laughs> mint savers. Yeah, mint savers. Lightsaver. Mint saver. <laughs> Light <saver. laughs> Sorry. Lightsaver of mints. And then you gave her the Yeah, uh, I, I gave her the I gave her the mints. Is her breath still bad? Not that bad. Okay. Just a bit bad. <laughs> that's that's uh candy buff. And and that's exactly what it is. Now I should tell you, it's very easy, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very easy. Very, very easy. Unless you do it on part of the trailer where we uh changes both. Yeah, and then it becomes more tricky. But to do the main it's routine... It's hard to change it back into a kick Yeah. But if you do... The, it is, but you, you've you done you, it. You, uh, you can. You can. You can. But yeah, the best way hard. to do it is, is kick yeah, cat, cat into, into, into mints. Uh, do we when do mints to kick cat somehow? Somehow. Mm. We need to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah, very possibly. But what we have... Let me talk about a few uh, points on this, first of all. So when it's in your pocket... It's 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 re it's set to go anytime anywhere, and unlike a lot of these gimmicks, there's no invisible thread, there's nothing to break, there's no elastic thread, which is quite nice. So you just have it in your pocket when you want to do it. You just pull it out. Now, when you've got it as the Kit Kat, it's a little bit angly. You want to bear that in mind. You want to kind of have it. You could sort of show the sides, but not too much. Because no, like a Kit Kat is a bit shiny. At the yeah, but what I mean is, you don't want to. Yeah. You, you need to be kind of careful. You don't want people. All the way at the side like that. No, you wanna, no. you wanna kind of step back. This would make a really good opener and walk around if everybody was in well, front like of you. Hold it to your chest. Yeah, and then and then it won't be an issue. Uh, on a big table, this would look really good as well. And you just yeah. reach into your pocket, you pull it out, and you'd be good to go. Uh, and then as you've long got, as you know how to like set it up. Your, well, not set it up, but just like, you'd open it in your pocket as you bring it out. Yeah, not in your pocket, but you can't really do it in your pocket. As soon as you're out of your pocket, just open well, you can have it in your back pocket and take it out your back pocket and open oh, it. And yeah. then is what I, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, once it's turned into the actual mints, uh, the nice thing is you can show it completely on all sides. It's very very clean at that point, and then you put it away. As soon as you put it away, it's examinable. Uh, sorry, it's not examinable. It's reset. It's not examinable beforehand or afterwards. Um, but to be honest, it's designed to be a super quick visual opener. So the way that I would use this is, hey, my name's Greg. I'm a magician. Uh, you want to see a trick with a Kit Kat? No, how about uh, how about some mints? You want to see? Or let's you know, let's just make the mints disappear. Uh, and I'd probably just do because they're the perfect size. I know you've got it down there. Once you give it here, once you've got the mints, it's the perfect size to just do a flip stick with. So uh, yeah, there you go. Perfect size to do a flip stick. Yeah. 
<laughs> Perfect size to do. I know, right? Amazing. Perfect size to do a flip stick. Um, there's a nice routine on the uh, the tutorial that I don't think you've done yet, where you bring out, you have the gimmick in your pocket, and you bring out a real Kit Kat, and uh, a real uh, no, no, sorry. So you bring out the gimmick as mints, and you bring out a real Kit Kat, and you put them into your back pocket. And then what you, in your back pocket? The mints and the, the kit. So you put them both into your back pocket and you say, look, let me go and get the Kit Kat. And you get the Kit Kat, but now you've opened up the gimmick. So it's the, it's the open Kit Kat. You shake it, it turns this into the mints. And then when you go into the back pocket, you've got the Kit Kat. So in other words, it's a transposition. Or, uh, or you could do the other guy idea where you got two and you can... Yeah, you can do that, but I, that's more practical, the way of doing it that yeah. way. Um, it, it, so it is, that it is customizable. So you don't have to uh, have Kit Kat. They have uh, yeah, uh, uh, Trident gum. They have a whole bunch of different things. So you you put the sticker on that you want it to be. Uh, I like Kit Kat. Ryland preferred Kit Kat, obviously, I which is why he said it's going to be called Kit Kat. I, I don't think I want the chewing gum. Mm. Um, outside of that, I mean, it is what you just saw. It's a great thing for social no, media. No, we should get, we should get um, measure the size and then go stickers of Snickers. Yeah, maybe. Unlike kick, uh, unlike a lot of this stuff that works really well on social media, it also works really well in live performances as well. So it's a great yeah. social media trick, but it's also a great live trick, especially if you do tricks with candy anyway, like you do. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's nothing to not like about this. This is a really good routine. Uh, it's relatively easy to do. There's a lot of different options, a lot of different ways of doing it. I really like it. I'm going to order one for myself as well. Uh, Wait, then I can do the two things? Yeah, uh, you can borrow mine. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this 89%. I think it's really good. 89% from me. I know you're going to give it more. 99. 99. Thought so. <laughs> so 99% from Ryland. 89% from me. It's a nice visual quickie. If you're looking for something to open your set and you want to do something that's quick and visual, this is probably one of the best gum stroke candy tricks I've seen. It's very well made. It's very good. Let's wrap this up. And that's another review show in the back. That's another review show in the back. That's another review show in the back. It is another review show in the back, guys. Thank you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos, this is important. Please subscribe to the channel. You know, we've really got big goals with this channel and it really helps if you grow it. And while we're on the subject, if you haven't already done so and you want to support the channel, please go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. You can go and check it out and see what all the fuss is about. We're uploading new content all of the time. Um, most importantly, Follow him on YouTube, follow him on Instagram. He's on coming close to 10,000 followers on Instagram right now. I'm still stuck on two and a half. I hate you. Uh, so if you haven't already followed him I on Instagram. I got 2,000 before you. Yeah, you did. Uh, if you, when you started like three years before. <laughs> if you, shut up, Ryan. If you want to see the, the newest tricks that come out on the review show, he puts them out on his Instagram channel first as performances. So it's a good place to see all the latest and greatest tricks because we get them all. Uh, a lot of the time before anyone else does so make sure you check that out i will be back again with a whole bunch more videos this week but me and ryland will be back next wednesday with another review show thanks very much for watching we'll see you again soon i'm craig i'm ryland we'll see you again take care bye everyone Bye bye.